The wait is finally over. The United States men's national team will play its first game in the 2024 Copa America this weekend against Bolivia. And you may be wondering, is this a must win for the United States? And the answer to that is yes. Absolutely yes. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to the ultimate US men's national team versus Bolivia match preview. This is how it's going to go. We're going to go through when and where to watch this match, past matchups between both national teams, current updates on the US men's national team, and if I feel like it, I will dive into how I would approach this game. Again, if I feel like it. And then later in the video, I will quickly go through Bolivia. For that section, I counted with the help of the Bolivian Yank on X, a great account, so go give him a follow. And let me know your score prediction for this game in the comment section down below, and hit the like button because it's a great way to support the channel for free. And if you want to support Tactical Manager TV even more, you may join our Patreon. The link is in the description of this video. You can DM me and I will respond. We do Jersey giveaways, pick up soccer events that we just did our very first one and much more. And this video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, but more on that later. So let's roll the episode. The United States men's national team is set to face Bolivia this Sunday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern time for the first round of the Copa America group stage. This game will be played at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, or Dallas, I guess. And if you're in the United States of America, you may watch this match on Fox. And make sure to mute the TV so your ears don't start bleeding. Yes, that is a side effect if you listen to Fox commentary. And the other option is to watch it on Univision or TUDN. And we will be doing a live watch along here on YouTube. So feel free to join. I don't bite. Like, literally, I can't bite you because I'm going to be here and you're going to be there. So even if I wanted to, I still couldn't bite you. Throughout history, both of these national teams have faced each other eight times, and it's surprisingly as even as it gets. The United States has two wins, Bolivia has two wins, and they tied four times. I believe none of those games were in La Paz, which means this record is quite bad for the United States because Bolivia, they are altitude merchants. So unless we played this game in Denver, it's pretty bad. However, the United States has won the past two games they played against Bolivia, a 4-0 win back in 2016 and a 3-0 victory back in 2018. And one little fun fact about those games is that Christian Pulisic scored his first goal for the US men's national team back in 2016 when we played Bolivia. He scored the fourth goal of that 4-0 victory during the 69th minute of this match. Nice. Okay, so now let's talk about what's going on with the current U.S. men's national team. Which, as you may know, the United States played two friendlies prior to the Copa America. The first one against Colombia, where we lost 5-1. It was horrible, terrible. We had a horrific game. The second one was a 1-1 draw of Brazil, where the United States played fairly well. There are some question marks in regards to how seriously Brazil took that matchup, but it doesn't matter. It was a 1-1 draw with Brazil. Brazil. And at the time of this recording, there are no updates on players being injured. However, it is safe to assume that Tyler Adams and Josh Sargent are not 90 minutes fit. With Tyler Adams definitely being more game ready than Sargent since he did get a good 20 minutes against Brazil. It's safe to assume though that both of them won't start. With that said, the US men's national team projected starting 11 that Burhalter will likely put out to face Bolivia is as follows. It'll probably be his standard 4-3-3 because there's absolutely no evidence that he will change. We haven't seen him try a back three any time ever since he came back as the U.S. men's national team coach last September. So it'll be Turner on goal, Joe Scali as the right back, Anthony Robinson as the left back, Reem and Richards will be the two center backs. The midfield is expected to be Yunus Musa, Weston McKinney, and Giovanni Reyna, with a slight chance of Johnny Cardoso starting over Yunus Musa. As I said before, I don't expect Tyler Adams to start for this one quite yet. And what pisses me off about this midfield is more of like how Burhalter utilizes Gio Reyna as a deep line playmaker. We're going to face a Bolivian low block. Reyna needs to be high 
up the field, but he probably won't be. Greg loves playing Gio as a deep line playmaker. It is what it is. The right winger will likely be Tim Weah. The left winger will be Christian Pulisic, which, by the way, this will be his 69th game as a U.S. Men's National Team player. Nice. nice. Now up top, it's 50-50. He did start Balogun against Colombia and then Pepe came off the bench. And then when the US played Brazil, he started Pepe and Balogun came off the bench. Based on what I know and what I heard, Balogun will likely start, but I would not be surprised if that changes and he starts Pepe. But as of now, it seems like Fulani Balogun will be the starting center forward against Bolivia. I guess now I might as well show you my approach against Bolivia and the starting 11 itself it's not that much different from Greg Berhalter what really changes is how we approach the phases of play in possession in our defensive shape everything else is kind of similar to Greg it's more of like how we approach the game so for starters I will not go with a 4-3-3 I'm gonna go with a standard 4-2-3-1 with Matt Turner on goal Eunice Musa as the right back I'll explain that in a second don't panic don't freak out Anthony Robinson as the left back Reem and Richards as the center backs Johnny and Weston McKinney as the double pivot Giovanni Reina as the 10 Pulisic on the left wing and Timothy Way on the right wing with Ricardo Pepe up top and I'll explain why I benched Floating Balogun for my specific lineup yeah, don't panic yet. Let me show you how I would want this team to position itself and play in possession. So in possession, it's more of like a 3-2-4-1 formation. Johnny will drop deep to help on the build-out. Eunice Musa pinches inside, and he helps Weston McKinney at the 8. Weston can go higher up the field if needed, while Musa is a more defensive 8 to stop the counterattack. Also, we don't really need a defensive right back like Joe Scali to face freaking Bolivia. Timothy Weah and Anthony Robinson will provide the width and the crosses to find Ricardo Pepe. I do rate Balogun higher than Pepe, but when it comes to playing a low block, crossing will happen quite a bit, and Pepe is a better poacher. Now, I do want Gio Reyna and Pulisic to play central in possession. We can, we can, and we will cross a lot against a low block, but that cannot be our only option. Otherwise, it's just... Burhalter ball, and I hate Burhalter ball. Having Pulisic and Reyna as the tens allows us to be created through the middle, and these are also two players that can strike the ball from distance, long shots, and destabilize an opponent's defense on their own. And Weya and A-Rob will already be out wide, so we should be fine with the crosses being delivered to Pepe. I hope that was a good explanation to why I would start Pepe and Musa instead of Scali and, you know, um, floating Balogun, which by the way, anyone saying Musa never plays as a right back, he literally played this exact role that I'm mentioning right now for Milan, at least three times that I saw throughout the season under Pioli, where he played as a right back and in possession, he would pinch in quite a bit and almost look like a midfielder. But now let's quickly talk about the defensive shape. And it's pretty simple and standard, pretty much a 4-1-4-1. Very narrow and compact, forcing them out wide. And I would counter press for chunks of the game when we lose possession, but mainly play a mid block. Let Bolivia have the ball for a bit. Don't press them very high up the field. We will quickly recover it. The quality for this team just isn't there and we're gonna get the ball back. There's no reason to consistently play a high line and risk leaving space in behind for a long ball against the Bolivians. Now understand, this is also a similar setup of how I would put out against a much better team. I think I kind of explained that when we were gonna play Brazil, but instead I would have Wesson McKinney as a right back if we were playing in transition, cause he can hit those long balls. We saw that against Juventus. And if we were playing against a better team, I wouldn't have Pepe up top because we wouldn't be whipping in those crosses. We would be playing in transition and I would have Balogun up top. Those are the little tweaks I would have. And along with that, I wouldn't really replace Weston in the midfield with um, Yunus Musa. I would actually play a Johnny and Tyro Adams double pivot if we were facing a Colombia, Brazil, but the setup is quite different. Besides the fact that we wouldn't really play too much of mid block, it would be more of a low block, soak up pressure. But when we play one of those teams, I will show you that setup once again. Now, before we talk about Bolivia, we're gonna hear a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. The link is in the description of this video. I will be playing the Copa America in this app and posting my picks on X and Instagram, so follow us there. We will be back in a minute. And if you made it this far in the video, drop a like because why not? Underdog Fantasy is a fun game to play prior to any soccer match or basketball, football as well. You know, it just adds an extra 
excitement to the game. In this summer, I will be playing Underdog Fantasy during the Copa America and Euros. You can download the app by using the link in the description of this video and use the promo code TMTV. Yes, please, don't forget to use the code. And let me tell you why. Sign up with the code TMTV to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. The game I mainly play is called Pick'em. I just click on it, scroll to the soccer section and pick a player for the specific match and select the stats that I believe will be lower or higher. It's very easy to play, but be smart about it because it's not that easy to win. I'll also be playing some underdog fantasy during some match live streams during the Copa America and Olympics, posting my picks on X and Instagram. So you must stay tuned for that as well. And once again, I'm a professional hater. So usually I pick anything that will have me rooting for the downfall of that player. With that said, once again, thank you Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the channel. The link to play is in the description of this video and the promo code once again is TMTV. Thank you Underdog Fantasy. Now let's talk about our opponent, Bolivia. Despite being in South America, Bolivia did not play every single edition of this tournament. They missed a few editions up to the late 50s. Even though they are known as the punching bag of Comebol, they did manage to win the Copa America once all the way back in 1963. They also made it to the final in 1997. But most of you don't care about that. What about their current team? What about their recent results? Is this team good? Is it a tough opponent that we're gonna face? And the answer to that is no. I believe we should always respect our opponents, but Bolivia does not have a good team. I'm just being honest right here. This is a national team that hasn't played in the World Cup since 1994. They actually never got out of the group stage in the World Cup in their history, which I believe they played three times. In the Copa America, they failed to get out of their group in the past three editions. As a matter of fact, they failed to win a single game in the past three editions. Actually, they didn't even tie a game. They are literally in a 10 game losing streak in the Copa America. And listen to this, in the past nine editions of the Copa America, Bolivia managed to win one game out of 29 in the past nine editions. The truth is they are altitude merchants. And if they don't play in La Paz, they usually lose to any team that's slightly better than them. They currently sit in second to last place in the Comeball World Cup qualifying with one win in six matches. That win was at home, as you probably already knew, playing in the altitude against Peru, a Peruvian side that currently sits in last place. So they essentially beat the worst team in Comeball right now in World Cup qualifying at home in La Paz. Once again, I am all for respecting the opponent. And the best way to respect the opponent is, is by, by beating the living shit out of them. Again, the United States not beating Bolivia at home with this current generation that we have and the generation that they have would be a total embarrassment. You wanna respect Bolivia? Beat them three, four, five, six, zero. That's how you show respect to Bolivia. Now, Bolivia is currently coached by a Brazilian and his name is Antonio Carlos Zago, a coach that has over a decade of experience coaching in Brazil, but he never really had any major achievements besides getting Red Bull Bragantino to the Brazilian first division. He also did coach Bolivar in Bolivia and he did win the 2022 Abertura Bolivian League. He'll likely go with a 4-3-3 formation that might actually look like a 4-5-1, sit deep, defend, and probably try to hit the United States in transition. Now, in terms of players, who should we watch out for? Well, before we talk about who we should watch out for, let's talk about who they are missing. And they will be missing their best player, a very tall guy, extremely tall, 12,000 feet tall. He's a giant, big man. He's called La Paz. Okay, in all seriousness, they're actually missing Marcelo Moreno, which is a Bolivian legend, center forward that played for Flamengo, Shakhtar Donetsk. He retired, so he won't be playing in the Copa America. He was also super old, but that's still a big player that they're missing. Pretty much the only guy that can score goals for them, to be honest. But watch out for their goalkeeper, Carlos Lampe, that plays for Bolivar. He's an experienced and solid goalkeeper. He has been doing very well in the Copa Libertadores this year. He will be key 
if they want to pull any upsets in this Copa America, including against the United States. Another key player is the 24-year-old attacking midfielder Ramiro Vaca that also plays for Bolivar in Bolivia. Good player that has also been playing well in the Copa Libertadores. Now, look, they have a roster that is mostly composed of players from the Bolivian League. Many play for Bolivar, I believe nine of them, a team that has done well in the Libertadores recently, so there should be some chemistry there, some good chemistry. They don't really have a goal scorer though. They lack the quality to punish the US men's national team. Now understand that I don't know how Bolivia will approach this game. I'm going to assume that Antonio Carlos Zago will play a low block, soak up pressure and try to hit the United States in transition because that's what they can do and honestly probably go for the 0-0 draw or try to get a lucky go and set pieces in, on the counter attack, something like that. That's my assumption based on what I've seen from Bolivia in World Cup qualifying against better opponents, which is almost every single opponent in South America. The United States should be able to control possession in the game, but the question is, will we find a way to break the Bolivian defense, which will likely be a low block? And I'll say this, if the United States does not defeat Bolivia at home, we might as well pull an Ivory Coast like they did in the African Cup of Nations, where they fire their coach in the group stage and went on to win the tournament. So what I'm saying is if the United States loses to Bolivia, which would be their second win in the past 10 editions of the Copa America, we might as well fire Burhalter right there on the spot. Just leave him in Dallas. Like he, he can catch his own flight. You just if we lose to Bolivia on Sunday, fire Greg Burhalter mid tournament right there. And I'm not being I'm not joking. I'm, I'm being dead serious right now. Okay, so what are my realistic expectations for this game and what is my score prediction? I'm going to say the US will control the entire game. I don't think Bolivia will be much of a threat and the United States will pull a 2-0 win. It won't be super easy. It'll be one goal in the first half, one goal in the second half. The United States will struggle to get that first goal and break the low block. But once they do that, the second goal will come in the second half because Bolivia will have to open up, I'm assuming, and possibly even a 3-0 win. I don't see Bolivia scoring in the United States. Matt Turner seems to have his confidence back up and our defense should be able to hold their own so my prediction once again is united states 2 bolivia 0 all right everyone thank you very much for watching don't forget to drop a like before you go and don't forget we will be doing a live watch along here at the channel during the game on sunday thank you everyone that joined our patreon thank you underdog fantasy for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching and have a great day